Hi, I'm Eric, Director of Training here at Just Add Power. And in this technical training video, we're going to look at how to set up a system with AMP VLAN. I have all my hardware here in front of me, so I just need to open the software and let's get started. I'm going to begin by opening the AMP software. If I get a pop-up for allowing this app to make changes, we do want to allow it. In some instances, you might have to right-click on the program and have it run as administrator. But for the most part, that pop-up will give you all the privileges that you need. Inside of AMP, there's actually two methods for setting up a system. We're going to focus on the VLAN option. We also have four ways to interact with a VLAN system. Because the system hasn't been built yet, we're going to begin by configuring our system. In order to configure a system, we must have a wired network connection on our computer. We're going, to, we're going to begin by naming our project. This is the technical training project for a VLAN system. And then I do not currently have a wired network connection on this computer. So we're going to start by connecting my computer to the network that this system is going to be a part of. I've got my router right here in front. Connect up to my router, just like I would at any job site. Wait for that network connection to become active. Hit the little arrows, and we've got our Ethernet adapter active. We do not allow systems to be configured over wireless. You do need a wired network connection. Once I've got that set up, I'm going to hit go. And the first thing we do in AMP VLAN is we assign IP addresses to the switch that's going to run the system. First thing I have to do is select the switch manufacturer. We are using a Luxel switch. And then you'll see in the second dropdown the range of switch models for each manufacturer that we support. So we do have the SW610-24 switch in this installation. And I have to have an IP address for the switch in order to manage it over the network. This IP address can be any IP address in your network, but it must be on the network. So we're going to give the switch an IP address of 192.168.0.10. The subnet mask is going to match our network's subnet mask at 255.255.255.0. And the gateway is going to be the IP of our router at 192.168.0.1. I do have the option of adding more switches for larger systems. But in this situation, I only have one switch. So we're going to leave it at one, and we're going to generate. Now the next thing the program is going to do is it's going to create a discovery config file for the switch. This is a switch configuration file that we're going to load onto the switch that gives us a baseline level from which we build our entire Just Add Power system. So by clicking on Generate, it's going to ask me to save that switch configuration file. I'm going to make sure that it's on my desktop so that it's easy to find because we're going to be using it immediately. In order to upload the discovery config to the switch, first thing we have to do is we have to connect the switch to the network. Now, I can't just connect any port that I want to. I have to make sure that I'm connecting the last port on the switch to my network. It's important that it's the last port because the other ports are going to be reserved for just add power devices depending on the size of my system. Now, you might have a switch that have SFP ports on the end. We're going to ignore the SFP ports, and we're going to go into the very last RJ45 port or standard network port. Now that I've got that switch connected to my network, I have to log into the web interface of the switch to upload the file. Now you might know the IP address of your switch, but for this example, our switch is actually at a DHCP address, which means I don't know what it is right now. So I'm going to log into my router, and I'm going to get the information about what IP has been assigned to the switch. In my Luxel router, I'm going to go to Status. I'm going to go down to Connected Clients. In that list, I'm going to look for the switch that I have as part of my system. I see it right here. 
on the second line, the SW610-24. And the only important part of this is the IP address. So we're going to copy that IP address, open up a new tab, paste, and go to that IP address. Enter in my username and password for the switch. Because this is a Luxel switch, they have a wizard at the beginning that has you change your default password. So we're going to give it a, dis a new default password. We use just add power, but nothing's fancy. I'm going to leave all of the other settings the same. Because remember, we're going to upload that discovery configuration file. So none of these settings are actually going to matter in a few minutes. Now once I've gotten into the interface of that switch, I'm going to find the section where I can upload a switch config file. For a Luxel switch, that's administration, then configuration, then upload. I'm going to choose a file the same file that AMP just generated for me. The DC at the beginning stands for discovery config. I'm going to open that file. I'm going to put it in the startup config for the switch. Not every switch has a distinction between a running config or a startup config. But if you're given the option, put it in the startup config. I'm going to upload that configuration. If I put it in the startup config, the last thing I need to do is I need to reboot that switch. The switch will reboot at the settings from the configuration file that we just uploaded. And since the IP address has changed, we can close the tab that we have open and head back to AMP. While the switch is rebooting, we can move forward with the system. The next step is to assign the number of receivers and transmitters that we're going to have in the system. For this system, we're going to assign eight receivers and eight transmitters, but we're also making sure to plan for expansion in this system. We're not going to have eight actual receivers and eight actual transmitters to connect to the switch at this point. But by setting it to eight receivers and eight transmitters, that's what I'm telling is going to be the maximum size of my system. So I only have two receivers right now, but I want to leave space to be able to expand to up to eight receivers. Always make sure you plan for expansion when at this window. Once I've assigned the number of receivers and transmitters, I hit go, and the program is going to give me a patching diagram for how to connect my receivers and my transmitters to the switch. So let's make those connections now. Here at my station, I have two receivers attached to my two televisions. We're going to grab each network cable for my receiver. And because my receivers start in port 1, I'm going to connect the first receiver to port 1. And I'm going to connect the second receiver to port 2. If I had additional receivers, I would continue to connect them to ports 3, 4, 5, 6, seven, and eight. Because I don't, it's OK to leave them blank. Those are for future receivers. Also at this point, we're going to connect our televisions up to our receivers. If you wanted to connect HDMIs before, it's perfectly fine to connect to HDMIs beforehand. We're also going to connect our transmitters to the system. Let me grab some cables. We're going to connect our transmitters in the same way. Our first transmitter, according to our diagram, is in port 9. So I'm going to move all the way over to port 9 and connect our first transmitter. Transmitter number 2 is in port 10. And transmitter 3 is in port 11. We can do the same thing on the sources at this point. I can connect my sources to the system right into that transmitter via HDMI. For this system, I've got an Amazon Fire, a Blu-ray player, and a Roku. And we want to get them all connected up like we're ready to go. Now that all of, all of our devices are connected to the switch, 
we can move to discover those devices. The program is going to adjust the network adapter of the computer in order to communicate with the devices at their current IP addresses. So you are going to notice some network changes on your PC at this point. As soon as all of the network changes have been made, AMP is also going to confirm that you've uploaded the discovery configuration to the switch. If you hadn't uploaded it at this point, it would tell you you need to go back and upload the discovery config. Once that discovery config has been confirmed, the program is going to look for which ports have just had power devices attached to them. As you can see on the screen, it's detecting a device in port 1 and 2. There are also devices in ports 9, 10, and 11. Those are our transmitters. Receivers were in ports 1 and 2. And then our network uplink is in port 24. If we look at the table below, we're seeing the current details about all of the devices in the system. We've got model number, MAC address, physical port connection, current IP address, and current firmware on those devices. If your devices needed a firmware update at this point, you would be prompted to do a firmware update before moving forward. These devices are already at the current firmware, so we don't have to do a firmware update. It saves us about 10 minutes of waiting while the firmware update runs. And since every device in my system has been found, I'm ready to hit all devices found to move forward. If some of my devices weren't found, I would want to check those devices to make sure that all of them have a solid power and no data light at this point in the process, or a solid power blinking data light. That would indicate that they're ready to be discovered. If I had a couple of devices I had to maybe replace a network cable for, uh, I would hit rescan, and it would go back through the process of looking for devices that are connected to the switch. We had all of the devices that we were looking for at the beginning, so we don't have to do any extra work here. It's found all the devices again. We're ready to move forward with all devices found. The last page is just a confirmation. It gives you the current IP of the device and then says here's the new IP that's going to be on the device. You don't get to choose the new IP in an AMP VLAN system. We use a consistent IP standard that we're familiar with so that all of your systems are easy to identify. Just going to hit configure devices. It's going to give me one more confirmation window. I'm going to hit configure and the program's going to get to work configuring all the devices in my system. You will notice that your televisions are going to reboot, uh, your transmitters are going to reboot as that configuration happens. Now that all the devices have been configured, we get a list of their new IP addresses. The only thing left to do at this point is to configure the switch. Don't worry, you don't have to do this part yourself. The software is going to do the final config of the switch for you. We just have to click the button. This is kind of the final step. So once we've done the final switch config, there is no going back. We are ready, so we are going to do it. Part of this process does need the switch to reboot. So we are going to have to wait for the switch to reboot. Sometimes it'll be longer or shorter. It's timed according to which switch model you have. So we're just going to sit back and relax and wait. And we're back. Now that the switch is rebooted, we're going to save a report file for the system. I'm going to put it in the same place we put the config file right on our desktop. That file is going to be important later. And then we're going to be finished with AMP VLAN. Our system is set up. All the just add power devices are configured. The switch is configured. The last thing to do is for AMP to undo all of the changes that it made to your network adapter and we're going to close the software. Now, you might have been wondering, hey, why is this router in the background the entire time? Well, because we've got one more step we have to do in order to make this system fully functional. And we're going to do that through our report file. 
The report file is important for this system because it is our record of what we built. Not all of your systems are going to be the same size, so it's important to have a record of how big you built the system, how many transmitters, and how many receivers. You'll see a receivers section at the bottom that gives you information on all of the receivers that were connected, as well as blanks for any devices that weren't connected. This system has six open receiver ports that we can add more televisions to later. Below that is the transmitter section. So we have five open transmitter ports so we can expand this system later. Now the last step we have to do is we have to apply a static route to our router. And until we've done that, we're not going to be able to control the system. So I'm going to keep the exact same information that's right here in my report file and I'm going to apply this to the router in the system. AMP can't do this for you, unfortunately, because we don't know what your router is. We only know what your switch is. So for the Luxel router that we've got in this system, we're going to go to network, and we're going to go down to routing. We're going to add a description for our route, which is just add power, and we're going to match the details from our report file. So we've got a destination IP that we're going to copy and paste. We've got a net mask that we're going to copy and paste. And we've got a gateway, which should look familiar because it's the IP of the switch in the system that we're going to copy and paste. Some routers have this metric value. You can typically set it to 1 and you'll be fine. You can set it to 10. You could leave it blank. Most of the time it doesn't matter. And then we're going to add that to the system and we're going to apply that setting. You'll notice the destination IP shows up in the top with the route information that we just entered. You'll also notice on our TVs that our first source in the system is showing. Our Roku is showing up on the TVs. Let's turn on all of our devices so we know that everything's working. Turn our Blu-ray player on. Get rid of that router because we're done with that. And if we open AMP back up, now we can use AMP to practice switching sources so we can see the system in action before we set up our control system. We're going back to VLAN, but this time we're going to connect. We want to test switching. I want to see the different sources on my TVs. All I need for this is an IP address of one of the devices in my system, one of the Just Add Power devices. Now, if you don't remember, it's back here on your report file. We've got our IP address for our first receiver, 172.27.1.1, and we're going to connect. All we've got is a simple grid system with receivers along the left column, transmitters along the top row. If I want to switch the left television, which is receiver 1, to watch a different source, all I do is click the button, and the TV has switched. And do the same thing to my right TV, flip over to my Blu-ray player, back to my Roku on both TVs, and I know my system is fully functioning. I'm all done. We have configured a Just Add Power system with AMP VLAN. Now it's time to move on to programming your control system and finishing up your project. Thanks for staying with us. I hope you learned a lot. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at support. Have a good day.